Iya. Microphone. The, the teams. The teams. Yes. And then uh, what says open message. Yes, what he opens and then you switch on. Uh, okay, it's uh, done. To so avoid the mute by the echo. Okay. All right. I guess uh, everything is ready. Uh, so let us start with the presentation of the DMC defense of uh, Sonar Day. Uh, mapping between images and conceptual spaces with sketch based uh, image retrieval. So, so now you have uh, about 45 50 minutes uh, uh, to do the presentation. We have here Eric uh, online, one of the members of the committee. Eric, if you have any trouble uh, at any moment, just uh, raise hand or try to, to contact us uh, in some way. All right? Okay, so let's start. Hi, I would like to um, welcome the committee, uh, Hatios welcome to the committee as well as I'm going to present today mapping between images and conceptual spaces, cage based image retrieval and a very great thank you to my supervisors Joseph Lados and Uma Padapal from otherwise for whom this won't be possible. Okay. So let me get, uh, take you through the outline, what it will be. It will be introduction, where I will be making you understand what, is sketch, what sketches are, and try to motivate you a bit to solve some problems. From now on, the sketch-based image retrieval is also known as SBIR. So I will be going to my three more contribution of my thesis that are cross-modal uh, SBIR, multimodal SBIR, and zero shot SBIR. And at last, I will end with a conclusion and future work. Introduction. So, what is a sketches? Sketches are kind of uh, human uh, expression of feelings, their ideas in different forms. It has been going on since ages in history. The only thing that has changed till date is the medium of expression. Previously, people used to uh, express in f uh, stones, trees, um, they're in the sands, in the windows. Nowadays, they use iPads. Why sketches? So, sketches can be thought of as basic visual communication, uh, which is simplified shape and highly conceptualized. W if you can see the uh, sketches out here, it's like a human abstraction of the images. It, uh, it's a representation of these images that human have. Yeah, sometimes human uh, has this partial observ observability, which has been captured by the sketches. So before I go in, let, me under let us understand what is uh, image retrieval. In image retrieval, you have images, you query an image gallery, and you retrieve uh, relevant images which are like similar to these images. But uh, just keep in mind that the image you are searching for in the gallery, mu you must have an example of it. For example, in cases of bikes, you must have an example at your disposal of bikes as well as cats if you are uh, asking for a cat. But it's not always possible. In that case, we need sketch-based image retrieval. Or we can also do a text. But in sketches, you can basically uh, draw the things you're looking for in format of point of view, its shape, its, uh, its textures, and many other stuff. You, the, the sketches can be abstract. The sketches can be more detailed. Before I go into much more details, uh, let me philosophize a bit. So where, here you can see 
uh, image where there are great western philosophers. So, I will be talking about Plato and he is always depicted with his finger pointing upwards. Why that so? Because af post Aristotle, he was the person who believed in the philosophy of forms and ideas. In and he described these forms and ideas in Plato's allegory of cave in the book named the Republic and in book 7 of it. So, where there is a observer bounded out here and he only has this only can see the true objects in form of shadowy images where uh, the this observer can never see the true objects in its true real form it can only see the uh, objects uh, in the uh, images of those objects so why it is important because we are concentrating on and also we are concentrating on the representation of these images in human head. It, it, uh, Plato said that it's, uh, there is truth beyond the realm of reality which can be captured uh, which people with their partial observability cannot always capture. So, this person thinking of these images can always think of the attributes it is looking for. It makes an abstraction of the attributes it is looking for. For example, the wings, so it uh, have this idea of this bird flying and it also sees the legs. So, uh, you can also see there is a famous quotation given the vision is a process that produces from images of the external world a description which is useful to the viewers and it is not cluttered by irrelevant information such as it just this observer is just observes the thing that is important to it. Moving forward, in this PhD thesis, the research question that we will be uh, attending to is like, can this SBIR be extended to multi-objects? Till now, uh, till date, we have seen uh, SBIR working on single objects. So, can it be done for multi-object scenario to retrieve natural images? Secondly, having done that, can we change the input queries into text as well as mixed modality as well as sketches. Why do we need it? Because there might be some kind of input dilemma. In case some sketches are hard to draw, people may not draw that and in that case, people will use uh, a mixed input modality to query the uh, input gallery. And lastly, we will deal with the classes that the model has never seen before. Like if there is a class which it has never seen before, can it handle it? Before answering the objectives of these questions, let's look at the tech sketch task taxonomy. So, according uh, this taxonomy has been divided according to the modalities. So, sketch is a modality, text is a modality, and there are other modalities also. So, in this sketch task, there is single modality where it can be divided into uh, uh, generations, partial, simplification and mm, it can be also done into grouping, segmentation and passes. In single modality, just have a look at this generation which we will come back at the later to take care of. In multimodality, which there are many other modalities with which sketch can be combined such as text, photos, videos, clip, cartoon and uh, 3D shapes. To confound our discussion, we will be only concentrating on this multimodality with photos and multimodality with text. In multimodality with text, we will be just concentrating on sketch text photo retrieval and with photo, we will be concentrating on retrieval also, but in just coarse grain situation and zero shot situation. What is a coarse grain situation? Uh, coarse grain is in which you draw any kind of sketches uh, of a class uh, and it uh, retrieves the images no matter uh, how fine grained you have drawn it. So, basically it is not looking for, for the point of view, it is not looking for the pose like that. And in zero shot is like once you have drawn a sketch and this model has never been trained on those sketches, classes of the sketches, it can retrieve those images. 
So when we started doing it, uh, we believed there were no work done on sketch takes photo retrieval. There were like no work on this kind of uh, domain. In course, uh, grained sketch based image retrieval, there were two works done, uh, which we can uh, see as milestones. One is deep sketch hashing, another is uh, deep shape matching in uh, ECCV 2018 and uh, CVPI 2017 uh, respectively. In uh, zero shot, mm, when we started doing it, there were only one, uh, two works done, but the most mentionable is this one, where it's like a zero shot framework for zero shot sketch based image retrieval in ECCV uh, 2018. Uh, what are the milestones of the sketch works done in the deep learning era? So as you can see, the rows uh, mentions the task, data set, supervision, and representation. You can see, uh, and it has been done during the deep learning era, so it's like from 2015 to 2020 onwards. Uh, in task, you can see course and fine grain SBIR, in, uh, in, and it has been going forward in kind of a generation, generative task. In data set also, you can see course and fine grain SBIR data sets. First, it came with course grain, which had con contained sketchy and tuberlin, and then in fine grain, it was QM is hues and chair. And then it moved forward uh, during the end 2017 and 18 uh, to my, uh, million scale data sets given by Google in sketches, by, which was quick draw, just the sketches. And in supervision, we can also see the trained from supervised, it's going to a self-supervised learning, unsupervised learning. In representation also, you can see that it started off with CNN, it went to temporal, and then it was a fusion of this uh, CNN and temporal, and then you went uh, towards the early 2019 and late, it uh, starts moving towards geometric space, which is GNN. So what are the most commonly used data sets? The most commonly used data sets in the sketch-based image retrieval is the sketchy extended data set. Just before we dive into the statistics of those, just have a look at this uh, sketches because this is important to understand the problem we are trying to solve. So in this, the sketches are drawn by a pretty good sketcher, like an expert. But you can also see by the pose and the form that this sketcher had the uh, image as a reference in all the sketches. And to take a look at the statistics, the number of classes provided by this data set is 125, number of sketches per classes is 500, and the number of images per classes is 600 to 700. What is comparison? The comparison is the per permutation of the sketches and images. So given a sketches, how, mo how many images it has to search for through, uh, again, given another image sketch, how many images it has to search through. So the next, uh, the next data set that we have is Tuberlin. The number of classes is 250 out here. The number of sketches is 80. Uh, the images are six, seven, uh, approximately 764, and the number of comparisons is uh, 1.9 million. So if you look at the sketches right now, something has changed. What has changed? The sketches are not having, uh, does not contain the pose and the form, the point of view from the images. So though the sketches were expert in the sense that the sketches are still well done, but they didn't have the images as reference. So in this PhD thesis, uh, the objective, uh, the questions that we have, we have raised before, we are going to solve some objectives. Can SBR have a uh, extended to multi-object scenario? Yes, it can be by using an attention model, by taking a subset of image features to query those, uh, to make it align with the query objects. Uh, in the second case, Yes, we can make it into multimodality by changing the input uh, into a multimodal, multimodal, where we can mix and match the text and the sketches. And for the last one, yes, the classes of the model can be handled by uh, making a novel framework for zero-shot sketch-based image retrieval. 
So this is the outline. Uh, so we have seen the introduction. We have motivated you a bit. Now let's un un let's go for the first contribution of mine, which is the sketch-based image retriever for multi-object scenario, and how we do it using a cross-modal uh, sketch-based image retriever. Learning cross-modal embeddings for multi-object scenario, image retrieval scenario, using both text and sketch in either format. So what kind of task we are looking to? The task we are looking is like given this sketch, this retrieval can be, uh, this image can be retrieved. Given a text, this image can be retrieved. These are the retrieval images. Given this description, the image can be retrieved. So before I dive into sketches, I want to think like why do we need sketches rather than descriptions? Like if we need uh, sketches in case like there is a, um, there are people not being able to speak English, but uh, uh, we can communicate using the sketches. So, uh, so suppose I cannot speak uh, Spanish and I have to explain someone what is a dog, I can easily sketch it out rather than doing a description. So thinking it, in this format, we're going to solve two problems. One is like, given two such sketches, can we retrieve images where the image has multi-objects? And given the text, can two such texts, can we retrieve images where the image has multi-objects? So uh, in cross-modal uh, SBIR architecture, how we try to solve it? We try to solve it by taking the images, passing through a VG16, and projecting the feature, uh, the feature obtained from the VG16 through fully connected by linear, non-linear transforming it to another space out here. Similarly, Okay, when we have uh, this uh, apple and banana as a text, we uh, take the what to vec format, uh, what to vec uh, representation of it, and again pass it to the same fully connected to project it to the same nonlinear space. So once we have it, can that is the query part of it. The image, how we solve the image part, we should uh, have a look from the right to left. So Having the image, we pass it through VGG, obtain the location-wise image features, in which, which after obtaining the location-wise image features, we pass it through the LSTM to obtain the different attention maps. We can ask why LSTM? We did LSTM thinking that it will remember the, uh, uh, the previous attended regions. So once we have this attended regions as attention maps, we multiply it with the location-wise image features and then aggregate it to obtain the features out here. Now once we have it for every timestamps in, in, uh, in this architecture, we pass it through a fully connected to get it non-linearly transformed and finally we, retrie uh, we get this feature space. Now once we have the query features, at as well as the uh, image features, we do a cosine embedding loss. This cosine embedding loss is done cumulatively because if there are more than one um, multiple queries, it's done cumulatively. If it's just one, it's just uh, done cumulatively, but over the objects it has found in the images. So what is a cosine embedding loss? So cosine embedding loss is given a sketch, an image. Can we bring these two closer if they are similar? So this y equals to 1 represent to the pair of the query and the objects present in the image. If they are of same class, we say it as 1. If it's of dissimilar classes, we say it as minus 1. And we supervise the, the training uh, using this function. And this is the cumulative loss function we have used. Going into quantitative results, 
So you can see this uh, column has the single object and this column has the multiple objects. So this, the first method is a handcrafted method we have taken and uh, that was there in the literature. The sketch -a net was another such method, but this method was for sketch recognition. So we had to modify it a little bit to obtain it for sketch based image retrieval. And there is another JN triplet, which we use for uh, sketch based image retrieval. Keep in mind, none of these three in this, case, uh, in this uh, state of the art were made for multiple objects. So we had to modify the code a bit to make it uh, aligned with the two multiple objects. Before I get into details of multiple objects, we basically for multiple, to do conduct our experiments on multiple objects, we uh, curated a data set from MS Coco, where we took uh, just for the ex sake of experiments, just two objects, which are the uh, combined classes we got from the sketchy, which you have seen before. So once it has been done, you can see the, uh, the results out here in the sketches. But since this were only done for the, uh, this state of the art was only meant for the sketches, we have the result for sketches. It is not meant for the text. But ours, you can use either text or sketch. So we all also had the results of text as well as sketches. So in multiple, you can see the results. It's a bit low and it's expected. Uh, because it was not uh, handling that great the multiple objects. We have some reasons for it. Before we go into the reasons, let's have a look at the quality of results. So once uh, the rabbit uh, is queried using our text, we have the rabbits. But just have a look at the wrong retrieval. Okay, the wrong retrievals are the retrievals that has been shown out here with a red box. It is looks like a mouse but or a squirrel but it's quite kind of very close to what rabbit looked like if if we wouldn't have noticed it uh, carefully uh, we wouldn't have understood but um, again it's a wrong retrieval but the network understood by the texture of the color it's much more closer to um, this rabbit as well as in this uh, teapot if you can look the cup out here has uh, the form and the shape of a teapot. So though it's a wrong retrieval, again, I would like to emphasize that it has kind of like a similar feeling. So the main issues that we faced while solving this problem was like the elastium based attention needs some kind of supervision because uh, the attention maps that we are getting sometimes uh, looked on the same region. The training strategies that we used were not that great because it was kind of the first work, so um, we had to improve the training strategy. And secondly, there were no availability of uh, multi objects data set, so we couldn't stand a standardized data set would have been much more helpful while doing it. Take home messages the take home messages, the query. Uh, multiple objects of same modality. Yes, we got it. We can query multiple objects using the same modality as either sketch or text. The attention mechanism on uh, using LSTM for co-occurrence of the objects was also achieved. But what we couldn't handle out here is if the queries were ha having mixed uh, modalities, like if it was from text as well as a sketch. So going forward, we will be looking at how we try to solve multi-object and multi-modal scenario using um, both uh, modalities of text and sketch. So how we do it? Um, aligning silent objects with the queries, a multi-object and multi-modal um, framework. Okay, so let's uh, recap a bit. So what we, what the ta task we have done, the task we were doing was like having sketch and sketch, we can retrieve images, having both the text, yes, we can retrieve images. But in this case, we will be looking forward, so having a sketch as well as text 
can we retrieve images again to emphasize a bit why we'd like to mix and match this two because a person may find it harder to sketch a dog or a human or something uh, which a per that person can write it so in case you have this kind of input dilemma you can use a mixture of uh, modalities to query the image gallery so let's see how we try and solve it so once we have this query set of sketches as well as images we again project the the text uh, to the through the word embedding and the sketch is through a cnn and fcn uh, mo uh, fcn model so b before i go into details the cnn and fcn has been trained to regress this a sketch image into this what to wick uh, embedding uh, space and we use this text uh, uh, we uh, using this what to wick uh, vectors to project it to the what to wick embedding spaces so now it's ensured that these two vectors are in the same space now once we have these two vectors in the same space we use um, a weight matrix or a fully connected whichever is uh, we can use any one of those and project it to the space out here from the image side we basically use the images we pass it through the cnn again similarly to the previous one we opt in the image features and we pass it to the attention map generator to uh, opt in the attention maps we multiply with this image features aggregate it and project it to the space let's look at the attention map generator in a bit more details so once we have this uh, image feature we pass it through an lstm to obtain this attention map so these are the attention map obtained in the first time stamp we pass it to the second lstm feed it back and we obtain the second uh, attention map like this we go on and once we have the attention maps we thought of putting some kind of supervision onto it why do we need the supervision because to make sure that this lstm does not attend to the same region it has attended before how we do it we take the attention maps and we have another set of the ground truth mask from the data set we curated we make sure that these two uh, sets are projected as a bipartite graph matching problem where we use a uh, one variant of it such as hungarian loss to find the minimum cost uh, to match this attention maps with the ground tooth mask similarly we think while doing this we also thought like why not use this hungarian loss for aligning both the queries and the object features that we have obtained out here so we use the hungarian loss out here just to keep in mind the cost matrix out here in case of hungarian loss has been computed using cosine dissimilarity this is uh, computed using binary cross entropy so let me make you understand what is a hungarian loss a bit so the hungarian loss uh, given uh, just this is for now just think of it as the image features we cannot uh, literally show you the image features uh, uh, image features but uh, can multiplied with the uh, with the attention maps so once we have these things so it try and find the minimum trace in this matrix where this tr stands from the trace and the c is the cost matrix which is this whole matrix out here and we have the l and r which are the permutation of this matrix so this hungarian loss algorithm try and figure out the minimum cost to matches uh, each a uh, query with the object present in the images so here are some generated maps so you can see um given a person having making pizza so the first uh, can attention is put in the wall the second attention is on the pizza the third is on the body of the person making the pizza and the second is on its hand to signify that the attentions are not always on the same place this is another such example where given uh, a person riding a surfboard 
the attentions are at different uh, zone first on the sea second on the surfboard and uh, the third is kind of all over the place before we go into the qualitative results let's have a look at the retrieval results for the single object queries okay so we know that the sketchy and tuberlin are the single object uh, data sets that have been made so these three uh, are the handcrafted features uh, that was there till date and you can and the rest of it are the deep learning ones so you can see a drastic change in the results in the mean average position in the sketchy uh, sketchy data set the, from the handcrafted to the deep learning so once we go into deep learning the results are really great but again saying this why the sketch a net results are bad because this was not made for sketch based image retrieval it was made for sketch recognition we have to modify it for sketch based image retrieval and we obtain such results again if there can be a question like why the 3d shape is not like that because uh, again this 3d shape uh, co uh, the code that they released didn't have uh, we couldn't modify it because we can just use the features uh, in this case so we really did not understand why didn't they re release the code and the results were very poor for the 3d shape but the deep uh, sketch hashing that was really the state of the art at that moment of time from cvpi 2017 had a good result but we uh, overcome it uh, by a lot using this though it's a hashing you might might have a question like where we were doing this with the beat information no we were not we used their regular features to obtain these results uh, because you may ask like if the beat information the results may decrease a bit because there is information lost but no we use their original features so this is our results uh, with our method using the sketch text uh, using the the sketch and the text and this is using both no not both means either sketch or text in case of single objects and in the tube berlin is the same we uh, overcome uh, the state of the art by a lot so here are some retrieval results for the multi object queries where again i have to specify this is ms coco where we again uh, took the we curated the data set for multi objects but in this multi objects we made sure that we have more uh, objects like not just two two three four and five less than six so once we have it we compared with the other state of the art so this state of the art was made for multiple text queries so we took that we modified it for the multiple sketch we have this result this was one another such uh, state of the art we have a result of 0.35 and in both the cases we beat them by quite a lot margin so in uh, the pr uh, let let us look at the precision recall curves why this precision recall curves are important the precision recall curves are important because if we see the precision recall curves we can understand if the classes were imbalanced and as well as at different recall what was the uh, precision so for example you are recalling like 20 images what was the precision so if you are recalling 100 images what is the precision if you are recalling 500 images what is the precision so as you can see our proposed methods are the brown the greenish and the light uh, bluish one so in the case of single object which is sketchy data set it um, uh, by it performs really well uh, in comparison to the other state of the art this is another uh, such precision recall curve for tube berlin in this case also you see our methods performing well y yes you can un you can see the text uh, the text part in this tube berlin failing a bit the reason for this uh, not performing as well as sketch as well as sketch plus text the sketch plus text went down because of this because it could uh, we the num the feature 
space of the text as well as the feature space of the sketches in this data set could not be aligned properly. In MS Coco, in, uh, which is a multi object data set, you can see the um, precision recall curves where again uh, we are green, red and uh, purple color and we perform really better than the other ones where the blue is the multiple text and this was a research done by uh, if I am not mistaken by Adobe for multiple uh, text queries. So it was kind of really good but in the other one it was not that good. So this is the TSNE visualization. In this TSNE visualization we wanted so why do we need TSNE visualization? It's a visualization where if the image and the object, uh, if the images and the sketches features are of multi dimension, we can project it to two dimensions of space to understand the cluttering or the grouping of it. If they are grouped together at the same space, uh, same area, it's kind of uh, aligned. So we did this for the sketchy data sets only. Okay, and this result is on the sketchy data set as you can see and they are kind of uh, uh, grouped in the same position. If you can see the green ones, the uh, yellow ones out here, the, a question may arise also like why the number of, uh, why, the, why this is much more dense and this is not dense? The answer would be because the sketches we have taken, this was the test set obviously and the sketches we were, is the number of sketches we are querying and the images are from the, from the database. So the number of images that we were trying to retrieve are, num are always greater than the number of sketches. So the points are number less, as you can see. So going to the qualitative results, I would like to take your attention to the uh, person handbag and uh, umbrella. Again, the red ones are the wrongly retrieved and the uh, not the wrong, uh, not the red, uh, red ones, red box are the rightly retrieved. If you can see the images out here, in that image, the person present, there are person present and there are hard handbags. The problem with this kind of uh, retrieval is that if it misses only umbrella, it flags it up as a wrong, but it's just a slight mistake of just not finding a um, object. And similarly, in this four, the more object uh, we are trying to find, the if we don't find all the objects together, it flags it as wrong. Okay, even though if it finds a, a, a table, a bowl, it doesn't matter. If it misses by even one margin, it flags it as wrong. So it's kind of a very hard metric. So what are the take-home messages from this? The take-home messages from this work is like, yes, we are capable of retrieving um, queried, um, uh, queried queries having multimodalities, we have done a supervised attention mechanism, we have tried to solve this supervised mechanism using bipartite loss to match the alignment, which you can also see in recent works in uh, detectron kind of works where people are using bipartite loss uh, to match the alignment too, it's just a new paper came out and also we can see uh, the thing that we couldn't handle out here was the sketches or the objects of the classic it has not seen before. Going forward, can sketch based image retrieval uh, handle classes which has it never seen before? We will be driving into the practical zero shot sketch based image retrieval, which is my last contribution in this uh, thesis of mine. So, what is practical zero shot sketch based image retrieval? Again, given a sketch which ha it has never seen before, can it retrieve the images? For example, out here you can see uh, the person drawing a sketch of a beach. Can it retrieve the, uh, the images having beaches if it has not seen before? So till now what we have encountered is like the sketches are not easy it's highly iconic and abstract okay as you can see and it uh, really varies in different levels of details and abstractions so a person can draw a butterfly like this or a butterfly like this 
which is really uh, have really amount detail detailing missing in this case and it also lacks visual cues such as in images you have visual cues of texture colors and it doesn't have it so this you can relate it to the allegory that i have said before so once it's um, like this we should move towards practicality what is practicality that zero shot is masked because we don't have the sketches of all the wall objects in our uh, disposal but while doing it we have to make many challenges one is like there is a lack of large scale data set of amateur data set mainly where uh, there are uh, people drawing penguins like this and also people drawing birds like this where you can see it doesn't even seems like a penguin it doesn't even seems like a bird but to handle this we have to move like this but these are the real practicality of the uh, real problem and also if you can see there is a huge domain gap what do we mean domain gap so people are trying to draw uh, like dinosaurus rhinosaur and trying to expect the model to retrieve a dinosaur so this amount of large domain gap need to be handled also and there is a lot of interclass variability in the sense people will draw mm, sketches like this where it's expecting a rhinoceros to be retrieved from a different point of view if you see this and the point of view is kind of different and also in this case also the way of drawing a rhinoceros is quite bit weird so uh, to recap we have seen a sketchy extended which was not entirely amateur it was relatively small and it had one to one correspondence so we have already seen the statistics where it had 125 classes the number of sketches were 500 and the number of images were 600 to 700 in tube berlin we have also seen the data set but as we know the sketches are still not amateur level because they were done by the by, by the experts though they didn't have one to one correspondence but they the, the number of images and the number of sketches per classes are very low okay very low according to the statistics where the number of sketches is 800 and number of images per classes is approximately 764 but the most important thing is their class ambiguity why so there were classes of standing bird flying bird and seagull but the seagull did contain sketches of seagull flying and seagull standing so this can be confused as standing bird also to solve this we came up with a new data set right now and we made sure that it has all the attributes to tackle the problem properly head, head on it had large domain gaps yes so you can see this crab done really uh, amateurish but uh, this is the image you are looking to retrieve it's made for large scale retrieval it has no one to one correspondence at all throughout the sketches and images it has large interclass variability so if you can see this uh, sketch out here it's kind of a um, beer but it doesn't even look like a beer if i haven't said it to you uh, and it has no class ambiguities at all number of sketches plus classes we make it sure that it's a huge it's by 3000 and the number of images per classes is near to 2000 so the number of comparison can be mounted to 166 million though the number of classes is less this problem is really practical and it's a large scale the number of classes is 110 and we curated this data set using the sketches from the quick draw google quick draw and the images are scraped from the internet let's see the architecture we try and solve it we take the uh, image and sketch and another image this sketch we will consider as the anchor and this as the positive image having the same class as the anchor and this is the negative image which is a different class we pass it through a cnn attention mechanism this attention is a soft attention we uh, have the feature and we call this space as cross modal embedding space 
where the two modalities are sketches and images. So we also obtain an image features from the positive image and as well from the negative image. Using a triplet loss, which is a ranking based, we try and bring the anchor and positive closer and push away the negative image class. While doing so, you're basically making this to come closer in the metric learning space and this go afar from the positive sketch. But while doing that, we realize that not only bringing those two closer will solve the problem, but we have to take care of something else. What is that? That is like the information that this has must go inside with the information that this feature has out here. So meaning that this feature space out here should be domain agnostic. Domain agnostic, it should not understand which domain it's coming from. To do that, we first just forget about the GRL. I will, uh, um, I will come to this afterwards. Think of a classifier which can classify what is a photo and sketch. So given the two features, it can classify whether it's a photo and sketch. Then we, after training this classifier to be very good after some epochs, we stop this classifier and introduce this gradient reverse layer, which basically in the forward pass uh, acts like a uh, identity matrix, like a nothing happens. But while re in the reverse pass, in the backward propagation, it basically uh, multiplies the gradients with a factor of lambda, basically scrambling up the gradients. What happens? So basically, once this classifier is very good at doing classifying, which is sketch and which is text, we scramble up the uh, gradients to fool it. Once, because we are trying to fool it, so what will happen with the sketch, the features out here, is that the features will contain mutual information. What is this mutual information means? That it will contain information that is mutual to both and which will not distinguish whether it's a sketch or an image and it will try and capture the shape. Because the shape, and if you can look at this giraffe, the body parts of this can be found out here also. In case the, that information is embedded out here and this information is embedded out here, we want to make sure that that information that is moved forward, that information is captured out here rather than any other information which is not required. In we, while doing that, we also made sure that this cross-modal embedding space is semantically closed. Uh, semantically closed means, so we have this feature, we uh, did a semantic reconstruction of these features uh, using a external knowledge known as giraffe. And once we have this giraffe as an external knowledge, uh, which is the uh, word to wake of this class, we try and reconstruct this fe these features to the semantic space. But we also wanted to make the sure that this negative feature that is uh, obtained in this cross-modal embedding space cannot be reconstructed and we introduced a GRL. By doing this, even if we uh, mine a hard negative, which is very close to this two positives, we make sure that this the feature that is obtained out here are discriminative enough. So here is the total zero shot sketch based image retrieval architecture where we have used three losses to uh, take care of different problems. One is domain loss, one is triplet loss, another is semantic loss. So going into the quantitative results, just have a look at this. So this is the sketchy extended to Berlin and this is the quick draw extended data set that we have come out with. Here is the uh, one of the work that is zero shot image hashing that was there. We took the uh, results on sketchy extended and Tuberlin, but because they were not providing the code, it was very hard for us to uh, replicate their work. So the uh, results in quick draw could not be reproduced. The other work that I mentioned before was this um, uh, cross, I think this is cross model uh, auto encoders um, mm, in which they provided the code. So we modified it for the, our uh, data set. And you can see by the results in this, that in the real scenario, this really does not work. 
where the, uh, uh, the sketches are re really amateurish. And in our case, we really performed a lot better in the MEP by like double, we cross it by double. In this Tube Berlin, I want to mention that we didn't cross it by double and uh, it was a bit lagging than the sketchy because the uh, because after uh, afterwards when i saw into the code it was like they were using 6% of the total data set as a test and we were using 12% of it so the results were not that uh, uh, impressive out here and uh, also uh, if with regarding to the ZSIH. In ZSIH, they were using basically 6%, we were using 12%. So we could have crossed this ZSIH also. Uh, and in quick draw, we performed similarly bad as others because this is the real problem we are looking at and this needs to be solved rather than doing sketch based image retrieval on TU Berlin and TU extended, uh, sketchy extended, because those are not the right way to go forward. So these are some results out here. If you can see, given a cactus, it retrieves images. Though the images in the red box are the wrongly retrieved one, but still I would like to emphasize on the fact that if you see the cactus out here and if you see the tree, it's not that semantically far apart. If you see the uh, beach having the sand and the cactus grows in the sand, this is not very far apart. And also, the leaf you can see out here has m more m closeness to the, uh, to, the, to the features that the images of cactus have. Again, for the beaches also, if you can see out here the be in the beaches, the wrongly retrieved is an image where it has mountain and water body, which is not very far apart from what does beaches have. They can have mountains as well as water bodies. So what we give a ready benchmark, you can have a one shot, one stop, zero shot, uh, sketch based image retrieval mm, uh, thing if you go to this link. It's a large scale scenario, retrieval scenario, and it's a realistic one. You just need to go out in this link and you have it all. So what are the take home messages? The take home messages, like it addresses the class it has never seen before. Practical zero shot, sketch based image retrieval. And data set comprises of real amateur sketch, which should be taken care of at the first. Conclusions. So, um, what have we have seen before is like it's a small step towards uh, having querying uh, multi objects for the images using both sketches or text as a query. Uh, having uh, a, it's a small step to mix and match in case there are input dilemma towards uh, queries. And lastly, we have uh, done um, a zero shot sketch based image retrieval where the classes it has never seen before. Future work. So we have seen that there are giraffes and there are the sketches of giraffe. There are chair and the sketches of chair. There are balloon and there are sketches of balloon. But in case there is a phone like this and there is no sketches of this phone, and also you have to keep, uh, keep in mind that this kind of phone is kind of obsolete and if you ask anyone to draw a phone, it will be a mobile right now. So this, there is lack of sketches and why we are emphasizing on lack of sketches after we said about zero shot because we think that little bit of supervision is needed at some level or the other. So we need to have sketch data without human annotation or human interference to reduce human cost, the only way to go forward is synthetically generating the sketches. So here is one of our ongoing work on Bayesian programming language. It's based on a work done by Brendan Lake uh, in Science 2015. Uh, it was a human concept learning through probabilistic program induction. It's, uh, it's like a symbolic AI where uh, which has been extended in ICLR 2020 by his student uh, using a generative neurosymbolic modeling where they basically use a um, combination of neural networks and symbolic AI. So we are trying to make uh, concept learning for sketches uh, using those two papers as reference. How we do it? We pass the strokes 
uh, using random work and then on those strokes we take out uh, statistics on type and token level and once those are trained we try and do exemplar generation. So, just to keep in mind that this sketch it has never seen before actually the, the model has never seen a sketch before never given this sketch seeing it just once it has drawn the sketches and if I would not have said you the sketches would have looked much similar to what human beings would have drawn. So, saying this I would like to take you to my publications. So, the second chapter uh, came up with an ICPR, the third with an ACCV and the fourth with a CVPR. Having said that I have also other uh, publication while uh, doing uh, my thesis because I started with document image analysis. So, I have some uh, result, I have some publications in document image analysis uh, in IJRA neurocomputing some print journals and some conferences. There are some uh, selected collaboration few of them with my friends also in some vision language and handwriting. These are all what I have done till date. Thank you for your attention. for this uh, presentation. Yeah. It was uh, dense but uh, well structured and uh, therefore uh, very clear. Um, perhaps uh, one first question about uh, uh, the consideration of, of the dynamic dimension of the online signal. In fact, uh, a drawing is often structured uh, by sub element and uh, generally the order of the strokes can reflect some information about the structure. If we draw a, a car, for instance, uh, we will uh, tend to draw wheels together and so on. So do you think it will be interesting to introduce more explicitly in the system the temporal and the incremental dimension of the sketch composition? Um. I think so too because if uh, the temporal but in most okay uh, so there has been work done with this temporal thing where they tried to give given some strokes they tried to cluster those strokes to uh, immediately on the fly try and basically uh, classify what kind of sketches it's getting you are understanding me did I get your yeah, question correctly yeah. like uh, you were asking whether the uh, Tem temporal uh, the temporal so data can help in retrieval yes yes the incremental uh, uh, of the strokes in fact when you draw a, uh, a sketch you do the things in a certain order yeah. and I think this order can be useful to understand the sub element of a, of a complex sketch yeah, um, so yeah, so there has been a work in the C graph 2020 where people were using this kind of uh, on the fly uh, sketch recognition where people uh, after drawing a score, uh, a stroke, the AI itself is trying to um, complete the drawing, okay. But how, so once it's trying to complete the drawing, basically what's happening is like once you're starting doing the stroke, it's trying to understand which strokes you're going to give. So basically it has this kind of learning done before using reinforcement uh, to understand that this stroke comes after this stroke, this stroke comes after this stroke. And yes, it will be very helpful if we can use that uh, stroke order information uh, in sketch based image retrieval to do it on a fly like even before the person has completed it you can have it. So, uh, the last work that I showed that has been going on 
can also be taken as that because from uh, those uh, suppose we don't have this kind of uh, online input in in case we don't have it we can also uh, statistically infer on uh, which stroke was drawn first and where is the ending point and where is the starting for where is the connecting point of the uh, the second stroke coming from yes the order is important mm -hmm. and, and do you think it will be uh, difficult to introduce this uh, dynamic dynamical information into your uh, uh, system no uh, so uh, if you think uh, y um, you, you can just like okay so you can have this uh, CNN architecture which is just takes care of the the pixel level thing and you can have this temporal architecture which takes care of the temporal stuff and you can take these two lines of uh, architecture and then uh, fuse it at the end where this temporal fusion comes and th there has been some work on this too where the temporal fusion works like one takes care of where the things are specially another by cnn and by rnn it takes care of which strokes you are basically doing in the order of the strokes and so once you have this two information line coming you can f fuse it together to do a better sketch based image retrieval but um, why wouldn't we have done it? Because in the sketch and the uh, tubeline dataset, both didn't have online information. As if I'm not correct, if I'm right, the sketch. Yeah, but you have this information in quick draw. Yeah, in the quick draw, we had this information, but yes, we could have used the online information. We didn't. We just thought that okay, um, having the sketches, can we do this? Okay, thank you. Um, I've got a question about the qualitative results that are very important in this type of study, I think. Yeah. Uh, I see in your report, uh, in uh, one figure, uh, that there is some uh, uh, question about the annotation. Uh, I don't know if you have the, the figure uh, 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 5.4 uh, in, uh, in mind, because... Uh, uh, there is some, uh, I think, wrong annotation about the door on the helicopter. E so exactly. So uh, I found this mistake. Like, what happened while uploading the picture to the LATIC? Uh, to the LATIC, there was this uh, class name mistake done while coding. So, but it was not the re result mistake. It was just because we were transferring the images from the that we retrieved to the uh, online uh, paper where we have written the paper. In that, there was this mistake of the naming. Con naming. So there was this two double. Are you saying of an image having two doubles? No. Uh, there, there is an image. There is a double, and there is a one image which are, uh, I think, wrong. Wrong tag because uh, uh, you say that there is an error on a door, and it is a door. So. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was just the like um, because of the coding in the LATIC, uh, 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 it was wrong. Yeah, but okay. it was not so done by the. It was not a mistake of the. It was just a mistake of coding. Uh, it was not a mistake of the model. It was just a mistake in the writing the paper. Okay, I think it, it, it could be interesting to to make the correction in the document. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, another question about the qualitative uh, result is that uh, it is surprising that uh, there seem to be no common res response between the different approaches you compare. What do you think about that? There is no common uh, response between uh, the different systems. Like the, I'm, I, I didn't get response. I didn't get your question. Uh, in fact, you compare different systems. Yeah. Uh, in qualitative results, and when we uh, observe the ten best response, yeah. uh, there is no common, uh, no uh, no no same response between these uh, different systems. Uh, mm, uh, mm. All, all the all the uh, all the, the the 
questions are different, so it's, it's a little strange, no? Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, maybe there. Uh, I didn't uh, see their feature maps properly. Maybe no, but the results were there. The it could be a problem with the feature embedding space. Maybe they were their embedding space is kind of different from ours. That's why it was not coming mm, close. Like I understand your question. Like why their retrieval results doesn't have any command commonality with my retrieval results. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah, yes. I don't know. Those their codes were yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, perhaps uh, another uh, another comment is you say the, that uh, you you had difficulties uh, reproducing some state of the art methods or protocols uh, mm -hmm. in your documents. Yep. Uh, one solution will be to provide some source code uh, for, for the proposed uh, uh, architecture. Uh, yeah. What is your position about that? So, do you think it would be a a, a good uh, uh, a good solution to to give the source scores of these different architectures so that uh, we can compare, uh, uh, make fair comparison between uh, systems? Exactly. So, the, f according to me, the source code should be there along with the test and train and validation split. So that it just doesn't become any more like people say like 20% randomly selected um, uh, data from the whole data set or 12% for the test data set. In that case, this 12% data, even if it's 12% randomly selected, like if you don't provide the exact thing, it's very hard to like r even compare it. Like it may happen that their method in this 20% random selection got a easy um, easy images or easy sketches. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So it would be very nice if people could provide not only just those uh, source code, but the test and trained data set splits. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got uh, one question about the, the, the last axis of your thesis so, uh, on the zero shot. Uh, in fact, I think uh, a good challenge will be to use uh, multi-modality to express one input to find one object. And uh, I think uh, we can have some uh, complementary between uh, a sketch and a text for one object retrieval. So, uh, what do you think about that? And is it uh, difficult to 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 go one step in this direction? Uh, can you come with the question once more? Because I couldn't understand. Yes, uh, I, I, I ask you if it is possible to uh, supplement the the query of a sketch with a text in the zero short uh, uh, approach. So. The goal is not to find multiple objects, but only one object. And to address this research, mm. you can express these uh, queries by using one sketch on, on text for uh, one object. Yeah, I think, uh, but um, right now the model is not made for uh, getting the text queries. But if it's made for having a text query, uh, because uh, the side information you see, it was just in the training phase, but in the uh, test phase, the side information yeah, was yes, not there. Yes. So uh, yes, it could be done. And also, one important thing that I I think I just missed it. But doing this what to wake, you can also not only query by the exact class name, you can query by similar names. For example. Um, like synonyms, you know, did I, uh, I yes. like if you have those like in my uh, the previous two work, like I did mm, some uh, just to see for myself, not for results, like uh, can you give a synonym and it, it does work with synonym also. So I, I'm not uh, remembering a synonym right now, but uh, a synonym is the word, like I don't know. For like a tiger, uh, what is the synonym of a tiger? Wait, wait. 
let me but, uh, okay so mm. you can think of a synonym no like a um, uh, uh, object that has two names yeah yeah okay yes i i think one uh, interesting challenge is to be able to express uh, one target uh, by multimodalities because by sketching it's, it's not always uh, easy to express the target uh, and uh, with text it's not always easy so but if you uh, agglomerate text and sketch for one target i think it could be really really interesting so <laughs> is it complex to do that and you don't address this kind of target this kind of queries in your uh, uh, in your work why yeah um, no it won't be difficult to do that but you're right but if you can think it in this way like a uh, few days back we had a like a reading group in which a, a friend of mine presented a paper in which we were understanding like how important the language is and how important the vision part is so yes we do take care like but the if you see all the works it was using this um uh, what to vex embedding of it so basically it was saying in a way that language is kind of important okay we don't know how important the vision part is but la with language even suppose if you're if i was blind can i understand the form factor of a bird by listening to someone describing it without seeing it yes we can and how that much is important yes we can basically an answer to your question yes we can do it it won't be difficult okay so um to conclude you mentioned two perspectives in uh, your works one based on the sketch synthesis to enrich the learning data sets and uh, the other on a structural analysis of sketches to generalize uh, the interpretation so which uh, one seems to you the best, most uh, promising uh, in the long term of uh, these two perspectives? Okay. Is it better to explore the sketch synthesis to improve the learning data set or is it better to, uh, mm, to go on uh, more deeper in a structural analysis of sketches to general, generalize uh, the interpretation? um okay so uh, the first thing uh, first like okay so people will be drawing different kind of sketches uh, to go forward i would not go for coarse grain uh, sketch based image retrieval i would go for fine grain sketch based image retrieval because the sketches i think uh, to go for coarse based i don't understand like how can a model simulate what is going on in the head of the other person so it has to be fine grain Secondly, uh, it has to be unsupervised in a way that we need to f uh, get hold of like sketches uh, from the images itself to train it rather than asking people to draw it. Like uh, suppose you've got an uh, image with two objects, we take, take those uh, edge maps of those two objects, uh, do a Bezier curve on it, do some approximation, reduce that edge map into some kind of sketch, uh, sketch looking thing and then retrain the whole system in an unsupervised way. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, if there was only one major contribution uh, in your work, what would it be to your opinion? One. What is your major contribution in your work? The major contribution in my work, uh, I would say about the last part, where we take the last chapter would be my major contribution in the sense that we tackle the problem in its core rather than going around the bush thinking like a sketchy, ex a sketchy uh, extended is the way to solve it. No, it's not, not the way to solve it. People are not that good sketcher. As well as um, I would like to say like the idea of having this domain agnostic feature is very good in case of uh, aligning the sh sketch features with the uh, image features in a domain adaptation way. Okay, so thank you very much for, for this interaction. Then thank you to you. All right, all right. Thank you.
Thank you for answering the question. And now let's move to as well. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I I just silent mine. Okay, so no. Should I mute this? No, I if I mute, he won't be able to hear. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, so I would like to take your, thank you for the question, but yeah, so just think, uh, like, okay, just thinking, like, okay, RNN was there, LSTM bettered it, LSTM was there, transformer bettered it, so all of this transformer has this attention in built inside, okay, so if we can use a transformer where it is basically attending to different regions, okay, and maybe the results will be better if we can use this transformer that has been used in detectron, detectron true is kind of a similar idea okay in detectron true using attention uh, is all you need and they also use this barpartite loss in hungarian loss actually barpartite matching algorithm and they mm, yes if we use transformer i think the results will be better but the idea core idea is the same having attention at different region uh, and aligning it with the code. Uh, and, and, and do you think that they, of course, they, they will improve, but they will perform a qualitative jump uh, or, or will be just a slight improvement? Mm. Uh, I think it will be uh, not that high, not that low, also. So they will be medium. I don't know. Well, I think that will be the case. So, um, uh, well, thinking on this uh, cross-modular cross -modular, uh, model, I was thinking on, on the work that, um, that, that, um, what to say, yeah, that apply these study transfer and techniques that somehow they are able to, to, to replicate when they, are, they apply it to, to image to different styles, to different objects. Uh, also thinking the work that is doing by Ray, by that you also know, uh, that they apply this for uh, half writing, text recognition. Do you think that using these techniques can help in, when, when you're learning, you're, you're in, in order to, 
know how to separate, but it's in the, in the embedding space where the, the shape information, the, the object that you are encoding, to separate from, from the one that came from, from the people, from the speaker or uh, expert or amateur. And, uh, and well, do you think that it can help to improve the, the model and also having in mind what you are going working now to generate a sample if this information can also be used to, to generate a new, new sample? <coughs> Yeah, I understand what you said. So it's like um, having the feature yeah. can we uh, disentangle the feature into a content and as well as the like um, like uh, the style transfer. It uh, style transfer networks. It does a, a texture part where it has this uh, layers that give you the textures and and there are layers that you give you the content. Okay. Once you have done that, you mm, so we did try this, okay, but due to maybe I don't know, but it was not working in the sense we uh, not working good. It was working kind of okay, but we uh, there was a paper in 2020 also or 2019 at the end. Uh, so they were doing this exactly what you said. They were uh, disentangling the content from the textures and stuff, and taking the content and generating the sketches and going into a gun-like format where you're giving the real sketch and the generated sketch, and you're doing a discriminator out there, and you're backpropagating the thing. Yeah, this work has been done and has been published. But yes, we tried it, but not thinking of the letter part. It could be nice if we could introduce the wrong the sketch re means reconstruct the sketches yeah but we tried it just with the shape uh, the content and the texture disentanglement uh, it was not performing that good but it was good it's not bet bet not being better than something some state of the art No, I have an idea in the sense like um, the losses we were calculating. I don't know. We were not having this smooth space out there in the in the content in the content uh, feature. The content part was going into a space where it was not that uh, like smooth, smooth enough, or it was not very discriminative. Also, so yeah, like couldn't do it. Uh, thank you. All right. And there we go. So now it's my turn. First of all, congratulations. I'm very proud of you and uh, your collegiate and uh, advisors. I really like the, the thesis. And uh, I would like to highlight some, some contributions. So first, uh, I like to structure the thesis that is very concise. And every chapter built on top of the previous chapter. And at the end, you built some very nice uh, work uh, in the zero shot. Uh, Image or field. So, also, it's very remarkable also work that you do with the data set, publishing a very large scale data set. It's important today, and I guess that this will help future uh, research. In terms of publications, it's quite impressive. Uh, you have uh, a lot, eight as first author, and uh, you have a normal at CDPR. That's uh, very good, impressive. And also, it's uh, the, the, the publications that ACC and ICPR they are good. So overall, I think it's a very good, uh, very good piece. Thank you. I have uh, those some questions and comments. And uh, the first of all, it's a, is a kind of a generic question because I observed that some of the of your publications are on the text uh, spotting and document analysis. And uh, can you just comment why you switch to the topic of the thesis from? And this text to uh, sketch this IR. So, to be very frank, sir, I was doing this document image analysis uh, for the. F I started my th uh, PhD thesis on October 2016. I continued this till um, July of 2017, so kind of six and eight months. So, while doing that, 
uh, I was in realizing that um, in the vision community as such, uh, this text way of going, hmm, I couldn't um, uh, give back to the community as much I could give it using real, I mean, not real, I think that is a work too, but in this much more acceptable by the people, so I switched. And also, if you think of the switch I made, it was very close to what handwriting and what, so basically ha had to keep that in mind also, like, okay, so I'm not totally uh, like um, burning my experience or like putting it on the, uh, flushing it down. I'm taking that a little bit forward with me in the case of the sketches. So, and uh, sketches also because I'm not a good sketcher. I would like uh, the computer to sketch better than me. <laughs> Okay, but, sorry. Uh, probably it was too detailed for an introduction. Uh, then also, uh, uh, I'm kind of surprised that uh, uh, there is a, a long tradition in psychology in doing a drawings interpretation, right? Yeah. And uh, you never mentioned this in the related work uh, anywhere. So why is that? So you mentioned uh, you, today you did this analogy, this nice analogy with Plato and philosophy, mm. but uh, I think that uh, psychology also could have some uh, some important uh, clues or uh, details or drawings that you could have inspired. Yeah, means I could have done it on that case also in the in the manuscript, but in, it was like uh, I was also getting confused while writing. I was not getting well structured, mm -hmm. so I thought that okay, I will just philosophize a bit <laughs> out here if it's possible. That, uh, let's not make life difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, but, but there are no, no uh, uh, works in psychology. So, for instance, studying the drawings of, of child. Uh, so, uh, that you could get uh, some information on that? Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't uh, know. I have not, no, no, I have not written. Yeah, so I guess they... they yeah, I think there should be some. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, oops, sorry, it just fell out. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, so uh, for the representational uh, part, so Google DeepMind is working on that, representational learning, and they're also concentrating on this part of what you're saying, like, they, I saw some papers long time back, or, uh, where they were also trying to understand exactly the way you said it, like try and understand the psychology of people, who is, how they are trying to un uh, do it, and then uh, get those information back into the model. on the image representation that we use. 
you know, uh, in all uh, the, the artistic proofs that you use, the image, the sketch is represented using an encoding from an FG, uh, from a DGG, right? Mm. So, but I was wondering, like Professor Antipio, uh, if the temporal information, but also uh, uh, if you could represent, since the, the sketches are very sparse, could you represent them using graphs, for instance? Or uh, I, I guess that this has been uh, this kind of representation is used on the current graph with methods. But do deep learning methods support exploit this kind of representation? Could you do that? Yeah, if we could. Uh, back, okay, so first and foremost, uh, graph was in the mind, but the graph frameworks that was it there. Uh, otherwise, I had to do all the graph frameworks mm -hmm. from the beginning. The graph it got uh, a b boost of graphs. I think late two thousand eighteen, early two thousand nineteen. Okay, so when I was doing it, there was no graph frameworks at the first place. Okay, secondly. Once you don't have that to like uh, build up the whole framework and getting the thing done, it's a bit hard. So yes, and uh, we did start on the when we were doing the doodle to search, we did start with this graph work, but uh, there were some problems which uh, we encountered, like. Uh, to uh, we were taking the node and the edges, but there was like uh, a problem with mm, the loss not getting back propagate properly. So I don't know why, but we were trying and it was not working. But there are last few works, yes. our last few state of the art has been done in GNN, and it's working. Yeah. What does prevent your architecture of just concatenating both and use both uh, queries at the same time in the for in chapter three? Yeah, so in chapter three we were not concentrate we because we have we were like uh, tackling a lot of problem at the same time, multi objects. Okay, so we thought like okay, we will not go for that concatenation. We'll leave it for the next one, and we will go for just the multi-object scenario with just the sketch and text. We could have done it, yes, and it would make sense, yes. But um, it was like uh, we were trying to tackle the same s a lot of situation where we d when we don't have a data set at all. Plus banana or banana plus potato, do I get a different outcome? Because we have the LSTMs in which the different state of one, LSTM fits the following one. So I think this ordering could be. Uh, no, but right? yeah, uh, but you have to think of the. Uh, okay, so you're talking about the third chapter? Third or fourth? I okay, in th in th in th so chess okay, in the fourth chapter, if you go, okay, if you see the Hungarian loss happening, yeah. even if it's like mixed and match. Like okay, banana coming after because of the loss uh, that is the 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 minimum cost path it's finding out. It doesn't matter. It just takes this query and aligns with it okay. wherever it finds in the in LSTM. Okay, correct. But the features of the LSTM would be different. The the uh, the, the the important maps that you get. Yeah. So at the attention map I'm getting, yeah. it's a, uh, so the, it's a, the, in the region it's attending at the first place, yeah. it's getting fitted on the second part, no? Yes. When it's getting in the second part, so it's basically understanding that, okay, this part should not be attended. All right. Yeah. All right. So it gives a different attention right now. So now we have different attention, mm -hmm. but we have the same image features, which we are multiplying with the uh, attentions. Yeah. We are getting the thing and then on that top we're taking it and we have the queries and we are doing the GN, uh, Hungarian and when we're doing a Hungarian we, it doesn't matter where if the query has changed no
uh, you always ask uh, uh, queries using the vision. I want an image with a banana plus an apple. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, I got so, uh, it. It's a different question. So if you want to comment something. No, no, I got it. Where you're going, if the plus has any kind of uh, yes, significance. Okay. Yeah, OK, so I understand this. OK, so mm, uh, we haven't seen this. Uh, we have not uh, explored this arithmetic part of the feature uh, embedding space where we could have used this kind of plus and minus. But this was an idea also to go forward with. But Yeah, it was getting confused. Yeah, the attribute, I understand, yeah. So I guess this requires a completely different data set and a different uh, attributes. No, so if, we, if I'm not wrong, so if you think of the zero shot first papers in zero shot in some other domain, it uh -huh. came out with like a data set known as uh, CUB, okay, CUB, CUB data set, or data sets where they were basically mm, trying to not go to this what to make space, but have these attributes. Okay, and uh, go to the attribute space, and then uh, determine what is the unseen thing. Yes. So then we have to have these attributes somewhere, uh, um, like like a side information rather than putting a what to big. You put an uh, attributes. Okay, so yes, so there are two things to it. Once, like, why didn't we uh, analyze like that? Because the, there were no kind of metric system that helped us to doing it. Second of all, like, semantically also, why we didn't do it? Because CIDR came out after, like, CIDR is a metric system that came out after we are doing, and there was this NDCG, which uh, metric system. Okay, uh, which was also like kind of to tackle this kind of semantics, but it was also after the works. Okay, let's move to chapter four here. Um, I have uh, some, I need some comments or qualifications about the architecture. Yeah, probably you can show the architecture. Right? Of the last chapter? Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, this one. So, the, the, I guess the Hungarian implementation is differentiable, right? Yep. Because so that's not uh, very common. So, we use the differentiable version of the Hungarian algorithm. Mm, uh, in this case? Yeah. But yes, we had, because you're saying, I remembered we had a problem uh, while doing it, then we had to make sure that this is get differentiated. That's not obvious. Yeah, yeah. Then the, the number of uh, potential maps that uh, you have to the number, is equal to the number of, uh, of regions that you have here, uh, of the ground, the ground group areas, uh, no? No. No, so we, uh, we are always fixing it for five. All right. So it means that the Hungarian matrix it has always the same size. No, on, on the rows, okay, so the Hungarian loss can be calculated. Hungarian loss is basically whatever you see is like n cross n matrix. Yes. But it's not a whole, there are ways of calculating Hungarian loss if, you, if it's not n cross n. It can be n cross 3, n cross 2, n cross. Yes. But I, we make sure that this is, does not, this is n, which is in our case five. 
and the queries is also five, I mean, at the max. Uh, it's not the same as the L number of regions in which you split the input image, right? No. Okay. Sorry. Okay, that's all from this part. Yeah, about the uh, PSME representations, I, I wonder if you try to do a PSME representation of also the, the text and letters. In this? Yes, and you did uh, for, for the images, for the sketch, for the sketches, but not for the text. No. So I'm wondering if the text also has this nice uh, symmetry with the, with the images. Sorry, I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you, yeah, because in the previous chapter, if you see the architecture, we, this FC, okay, was not, was not very, that's why we said that the training strategies were different, okay, and this F, FC was taking the what to wick and was very nicely projecting to this space, whereas was not doing it for this case, and th that's why we re thought of regressing this directly to the space in the next chapter. Like, okay, yeah, we were having this problem, like. Okay, so what happens in quick draw, so it was, it is a tool that it came out with where people draws anything and it's tried to classify it, okay. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, this uh, the classification results in this kind of sketches are like really good. I don't know how, I know how, but uh, are good. So, yeah, so they basically, uh, let's not go in that. Okay, so uh, after doing sketches, they capture those sketches. Yes. And after having those sketches, they release it as um, bit uh, like uh, binary binary um, files okay. from where we basically took took it but did you get the temporal information in these binary files yeah yes oh, that's very good that's very good and uh, i played yesterday did with this quick draw and what i observed is that uh, once the network already recognized what you were trying to draw yeah uh, they uh, they stopped the drawing so that's why no, no, previously used to never used to happen. The, when they released this, they used to make it draw. Oh, yeah. right. Now they have become like, okay, we are good. Because something that I observed also from your data set is that drawing the domain gap between the real images and uh, the sketches is too large. So, uh, that could be the reason also. Like this, right? Okay. That's very challenge, challenge. Yeah, th that could be the reason also. But because n in this case, if you see, okay. Okay, this is uh, this is a uh, this is from uh, Google, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Uh, so th I think also no no maybe I was wrong in the previous statement. I take it back. Yeah, maybe they stopped them drawing. Mm -hmm. That's why they draw this badly. All right. Uh, but yeah, for me the data set is very challenging, but probably more challenging than the because it's a partial drawn in the sketches, no. Yes. Yeah, can you, yeah, so how is 
this network just during inference. I understand the training, but uh, I'm not really sure if I understand how you are using the inference. Uh, an inference? Yeah. We just give this. Uh, f uh, f no, everything else out here. You remove all this? Yeah. All right. So you just keep it in the embeddings and then we can keep the L2 distance uh, in the embeddings and that's all. Mm. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was trying to figure out what, what this uh, gradient reverse layer, the role of this GRL. Mm. So you explained it very well here today. Mm. Uh, but still, in, well, I have. Uh, have some doubts. Did you try to train the network without this layer? So is there any difference without the GRL layer? Yeah, it's, I think it's in the um, abstract. There is an ablation study where we show it. Oh, uh, sorry, in manuscript I said. Okay, anyways. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So GRL layer to make you understand. Okay, and I have to go to slides before. Sure. Okay, so I had. So. Don't consider this anymore. <laughs> okay, now we are going to. Okay, so there is a general law. The so this was a paper by Yaroslav Ganin. Okay, he's working right now in DeepMind, mm -hmm. in ICML 2015. Yeah. So basically, what he says is like uh, in the forward pass, this G uh, gradient reverse layer does not is just just a simple pass forward. But while in the back propagation, it's basically multiplying the the derivatives with a lambda factor to basically say that okay, whatever and a minus lambda factor, so that the derivatives that is coming on the back is like uh, it's not the right derivatives. It's, so the back propagated error is not right at all. It's completely opposite mm -hmm. to the right ones. So it's basically saying diverge, diverge, not converge, converge, no. Sorry, so couldn't hear you. Which are the strategies to improve the results on these uh, things that you created? Did, did I say that I've created? Yeah, yeah, because the results in there are pretty low. Yeah, so those no, oh, oh. Um, domain adaptation uh, as well as uh, not trying to not trying to go for coarse, coarse grained SBIR anymore, go for fine grained. Okay? Because coarse grained SBIR, you really don't understand. I mean, it's very hard for the model to basically go inside the head of someone else to understand what he's trying to draw. Yes. It's basically a shape matching should thing should happen, kind of. What would I have changed? What would you make different? Okay, so um, I would uh, go for fine grained again, mm -hmm. not to go for this coarse grained at all. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, and uh, while going there, I would like to go work in the thing that I'm working right now, like uh, the generative way of doing things, and go for an unsupervised learning mechanism yeah. rather than going for all the supervised way.
Uh, bye bye. Yeah, that's okay for me. All right. So, is there any other doctor in the room that wants to ask a question? Or, Joseph, as an advisor, do you want to say something? Yes. Uh, I, I don't hear you. <laughs> oh, I'm asking if there is any other doctor in the room who wants to ask. And if, and if not, if the if advisor. The advisor Yes, I, I will just have some few words. Well, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Francesc, uh, Eric, and Julio for accepting the, the committee because, due to the circumstances, it's an effort, an additional effort, to, to come, especially to come here for a, for a thesis. Second, I would like to thank uh, Professor Uma Palapa because he, he gave the opportunity to Sunak from here, uh, Mabara has done a very good uh, recruiting uh, activity. That is the third generation of people coming from Kolkata, uh, and all of them did a very good job. And finally, Shunak, well, congratulations. Uh, it was my pleasure to work with you Thank in you. the last uh, four years. I think. It was a pleasure. Exactly. Uh, you did a good, uh, good job. Uh, you started a uh, uh, rough sketch of the thesis, and then you, you did you, this fine tuning uh, progressively, and then finally you got a nice picture of the original uh, sketch. Uh, uh, you like to, you have uh, in research, you have curiosity of touching many things at the same time. <laughs> in research, it is good. Uh, also, it is good also to to penalize things, uh, penalize at least three things, <laughs> the three, the three main, main chapters. So, uh, congratulations, uh, happy to, to work with you, and uh, success in the future, of course. Thank you, it's same here. All right, thank you. Then we'll just uh, do the deliberation in private. Uh, Should I close this? Yes, yeah. close to so bye. Right. Okay. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You like it? Yes, I like it.